But if you don't eat the good parts, you might eat an excess, you might gain weight. All right? Now, I can see some of you sleeping as well, yeah? I think everyone needs to stand up, please, for me. Stand up. <laughs> no sleep in my sleeping now, is that fair? <laughs> All right, shake a little bit. Go stretched out, yeah. That's it. <laughs> okay, have a seat. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, let us compare the food 60 years back and now. Is it the same? No. 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 How many of How many of you eat chicken? Say I. I. All right. Is a chicken a chicken now? No. 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 <laughs> chicken. <laughs> A chicken is no more a chicken, ladies and gentlemen. A chicken takes only 28 days to grow. Same chicken in the past took 60 days to grow. What do we have in our chicken now? Steroid, hormones, antibiotic. Teenagers, 11 years old, looking like 18 years old now. <laughs> McDonald's, KFC, fast food, chicken, right? So we need to eat what? Organic food. Do you eat organic food? Yes, fantastic. For those who eat organic food, beautiful, good job. For those who don't, start investing your money in organic food. All right? It's not expensive. It's just how much, how you invest your money in the in your life style. All right? Because uh, so many people tell me, you know what? Uh, organic food is expensive, but they will drop investing the scope from McDonald's. So <laughs> it's about how you invest your money. Okay? Now, let us talk about detoxification. Why do you think we need to detox our body? Get rid of the waste and uh, keep Do you believe that you poison yourself every single day? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. from the chicken. There you go. So, so I'm going to tell you, you wake up in the morning, you drink what? Water. Coffee. Be honest to me. How many of you drink coffee? Be honest to me. Okay. Tea. <laughs> If you drink tea, fantastic, but if you drink coffee, mm -hmm, there's a problem because coffee slows your metabolism for four hours. Okay? You know, in the morning when you wake up, it's your cortisol level which wakes you up in the morning. Now, when you drink one cup of coffee, it increases your cortisol level. Then when you miss that one cup of coffee, it drops down. Then you need more coffee, you crave for that coffee, you're addicted to this, you feel lethargic, you feel sluggish. You don't have energy because your metabolism is going down now. Okay, so coffee is very, very acidic as well. How many of you have heard about the pH scale before? Yeah. pH, yeah. the balance between acid and base. Base means alkaline. Okay, when we are born, we are born in the middle here at 7.36, slightly towards the alkaline state. Coffee is, I mean, acid is 1, alkaline is 14. Yeah. Okay, the pH, what does the pH stand for? pH stands for potential hydrogen. If you want to remember this, call it perfect health. And if you want to be in perfect health, you need to be here at 7.36. This is a newborn baby. Okay, the bloodstream of a newborn, newborn baby is at 7.36. However, as we grow as an adult, we start to put acid in our body, which stand here at four. Coffee, stand here at four. Very, very acidic. Think of it like this. Uh, do you feed baby with coffee? No. Do you feed baby with soda? With alcohol? No. But as we grow as an adult, we will start to put all these toxins in our body and we move towards the acidic state. Okay? Be honest to me, how many of you drink soda? Soda is stand here at 2.9 next to the battery acid of your car. Why don't you drink the battery acid of your car then? It's better. <laughs> it's good. So imagine how much inflammation this will cause inside of your body, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what do you add in the coffee? Sugar, sugar. sugar cream. cream. Let's say refined sugar. Is sugar good or bad? So you know the answer, but you still take it. <laughs> All right. So now, now there was an experiment conducted with uh, sugar and a rat. You know the rat had the same metabolism as human being. So they made the rat addicted to cocaine, made drug. 
cocaine drug and they put the rat on a cage on one side in the cage they put cocaine and on the other side they put sugar where do you think the rat ran to? Sugar. the sugar the sugar gave the rat a better fix and do you know what they used as sugar in the cage? it was oreo cookies so how addictive it is, you understand? Now, every day like, when you walk into the market now, there is always one packet of chips you like the most. There is always one juice you like the most. There is always one chocolate you like the most. Why? Because of what? What do they add in these products? Addict? Addictives. What is the most common addictives we have in our food nowadays? MHG. G. MHG is the most common addictive nowadays. Almost in all the food you find this. Addictives. Alright? Now, these are all toxins you're putting in your body every single day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say I cut an apple and I place it on this table here. What's going to happen to the apple? It's going to brown, start to oxidize, start to rot. But if you go into the market, you will see 100% natural juice, apple. Do you think it's natural? No. 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 What is the added this juice? Preservative. Preservative, fantastic. Now, what is preservative made for? Yes. Do you think your body will recognize these chemicals will be able to break it down? No, no so it stays inside. All right. Who knows? They need to, ha they need to make right chemicals formula to make all the juice taste the same there's all the apple taste the same no but all the juice tastes the same so they add lots of chemicals in this and they will tell you it's 100 percent natural juice but it's not natural okay so at the end of the day what are we putting in our body <laughs> how does it make us feel <laughs> yes all right so you bombard yourself every single day with toxins and you are not servicing your body but you are servicing your car instead. You are ignoring, ignoring your health. Alright? So this is the reason why we need to detox ladies and gentlemen. Now allow me to explain to you what's going to happen if you have all these toxins inside of your body. Now, this is a pH scale, right? Where do you think you stand right now? Acid or alkaline? Acidity. Do you know what's going to happen if your cell pH change? If your cell, you know in the body you have cells, right? Mm -hmm. If your cell pH change, you get cancer. What's going to happen if your blood pH change? You die. Who said that? You die. Correct. You die. If your blood pH change, you die. So in your body, there's an organ that always try to help you balance the system, try to realkalize your body. Good. Which organ does this? Which your liver, fantastic. Your liver is your detoxification organ. Alright? It is very, very powerful. It has more than 500 metabolic functions to perform. Okay? Now, when you stress, what do you do? <sighs> Why? Why do you do like this? <sighs> like you need oxygen. Right? Because acid, it decreases your oxygen level. Alkaline, it gives you oxygen. But when you stress, which hormones do you produce? Cortisol. cortisol. And cortisol hormone is acidic. And it is decreasing your oxygen level. That's why you take deep breath. <sighs> because your body needs oxygen. You need to supply oxygen to your bloodstream. All right? So every single day, we are moving towards the acidic state. Now, what's going to happen if I have acid on my hand? It's going to burn. What's going to happen if I have acid inside? It's going to burn. What would you put on your hand if you have acid? Water. Water. What do you think your body will retain if you have acid inside? Water. Does water have weight? What's going to happen to your weight? Uh -huh. Goes up. Does it make sense why you retain water retention now? Because your body is very acidic. The more acid you have, the more your body swells. Does it make sense now to you? I'm going to explain you in a diagram, okay? So imagine, this is your skin, okay, this is your skin, this is your connective tissues, and then you have your cell, this is the fat cell, right, this is a fat cell, 
Now, underneath your fat cell, you have your lymphatic system that flush all the toxins out that you put every single day. However, this is your liver. Your liver as well is filtering these toxins here. But what's gonna happen if I have a butter, I have a glass of water and I keep pouring water in this, what's gonna happen? Overflow. It's gonna overflow, right? So the toxins start to overflow and your liver push it away from you, from the so the toxins goes around the cells now. When it goes around the cells, oxidation will occur, water will accumulate around the cell. Why do you think water accumulates in your body? Keep it from burning. Because your body is very acidic, yes? Okay. If you twist your ankle, what's gonna happen? Inflammation. Swells. Because that's your body's defense mechanism system. It will send water to protect it. Yeah. Now imagine you have toxins and acid around the cells, it is attacking the fat cell. So water will accumulate around to protect the fat cell. Why do you need fats in your body? Energy. For energy, yes, because when fats convert into your liver, it goes into glucose. It becomes glucose, and glucose means energy for your muscles, okay? However, if you have toxins around, you will have water retention around your fat cell. And this water retention now, it applies pressure on your connective tissues, and this is what causes your cellulite on their skin. And this is what also causes poor circulation. If you get cold hands, cold feet, ache and pains, it's gonna cause you poor circulation as well, okay? So what is the root cause of the problem here? The acid and the toxins that you keep putting in your body. Let's say the average age in this room here is 25 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and for 25 years, you have never serviced your body from inside. What's gonna happen? Now, do you brush your teeth every single day? Yeah. Do you take shower every day? Yeah. What's gonna happen if you don't do this? <laughs> so, so what's gonna happen inside? Can you imagine your small intestine, your small intestine is 22 feet long. How much buildup of toxins will be in the walls of the intestine? Your colon can expand and hold up to 20 pounds of waste. If you eat five times per day, how many times do you need to excrete? Five times. Five times. How many times do you excrete? A lot. How many times a baby excrete? <laughs> so now ask yourself a question. Are you excreting enough? All this staying inside of your body is causing toxemia, which is auto intoxication, which is going to cause inflammation, which is going to cause water retention. That's all problems. Alright, now, <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, which organ do we need to clean now? Liver. Your liver. What's going to happen if you have a healthy liver? Your liver will function properly. It will be able to break down the toxins around your cell, easy. If you don't have these toxins around your cell, that means there is no water retention. And if there's no water retention, you will have more oxygen and you will have more heat. So when you exercise, you can also break down these fats easier. Because how many of you exercise, but you don't see results? Maybe you see results, but only on your face or on your forearms, but not on this area here. Why? Let me explain you why. You know, in your body, you have lymph nodes. You know what are lymph nodes? Okay, ladies, you have your major lymph nodes here under your chin, under your arm, trunk, and thighs. So it's just right here. Under the chin, under the arm, trunk, thighs, behind the knees. Ladies have 140 lymph no, 240 lymph nodes. Okay? And lymph nodes, they store toxins, they store the acid. That's why these areas swell. Okay? Men, have only 180 lymph nodes, but just here. That's why men suffer from big bellies only. But we are lucky, we have only 180, but ladies have 240, all these areas. Okay, now these areas, they store the toxins. That's why these areas swell. So you have more water retention, these areas, okay? Now, so the weight you're gaining is coming from what? From the water? Mm -hmm. 
retention, okay? So the more water retention you have around the cell, means there's more inflammation. So your liver will not be able to break down these fats now. Now if it can't break down these fats, what's gonna happen to your body fat percentage? Go up. Goes up. Now if, you, if your fat is not being broken into glucose, what's gonna happen to your energy level? Go down. Goes down, you feel lethargy, you feel low energy. Even after you eat, you want to sleep. Yes. <laughs> okay? Oh, <yeah. laughs> because, you can't break down this fast to provide you energy. Alright, so now let's move on. Um, let's talk about high blood pressure. How many of you suffer from high blood pressure? Okay. <laughs> Do you know what is your alkaline reserve in your body? Alkaline. There is something that is very alkaline in your body. Who can tell me? Nobody? Alright. There's, uh, there's, a, there's something that is very alkaline inside of your body. No? Alright. Let me explain. So this is no. the bloodstream, okay? In the bloodstream you have white blood cell, you have red blood cell, okay? And now you keep putting toxins, alcohol, coffee, stress, medication, all goes into your bloodstream as toxins and acid, okay? So this is your bone, let's say it's your knees, okay? What's gonna happen, right now your bloodstream is very acidic, so your liver is working very hard to filter these toxins out, your kidneys is peeing the acid out, okay? However, calcium will start to deplete from your bone because calcium is alkaline. 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 So calcium deplete from your bone, it goes into your bloodstream, it tries to help you Realkalines your body stream. However, when calcium depletes from your bone, what's gonna happen to your bone density? It goes down. It goes down. The bone becomes Brittle. greater. Bone on bone inflammation is gonna cause osteoporosis. Osteoarthritis, inflammation, end up doing surgeries on knees. How many people in the US now doing yeah. replacing knees? It's a lot. And why? Because their body is very acidic, the lactic style is very acidic. Now, so many people will tell me, you know what, Savish? Oh, I have high blood pressure because it's in my family, it's inheritance. My answer is always the same. It's not because it runs in the family, it's because no one runs in the family. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you inherit the same lactic style of your parents. Yes. Ask yourself this question, ladies and gentlemen. What example are you giving to your children when you're sitting at the at the video deck eating burger, eating pizza? Ask yourself what example you're giving to your children when you're giving them soda to drink. Ask them to eat. So do you realize you are teaching your children bad stuff, your grandchildren bad stuff, and they are having the same lifestyle as you. And then they will put this on you, they will say, oh, this is because of my mom, this is because of my grandma. That's why I'm having this problem today, okay? So we need to be very particular, right? So now you have calcium in your bloodstream, you have magnesium in your bloodstream. What's gonna happen, your heart needs to pump harder to flush these toxins out. So therefore your blood pressure goes up. However, your bone density goes down. Now you go to doctor. Doctor, I'm having high blood pressure. <laughs> The doctor, what the doctor will give you? Medication. What is medication? Acid. Fixing the symptoms only and causing more problems. After right. taking medication for high blood pressure, they put you on standing because your cholesterol level will go high. Now you have ache and pain, so you go again. They give you painkillers because you have ache and pain. More? Alice. Alice medication. So we start with one medication, we end up with a pile of medication. Alright, does it make sense so far? Okay, now imagine this is your intestine, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this is your digestive system. That's your intestine, this is where you excrete. Okay, let's say you eat chicken, yeah? Okay, is chicken a good protein? Yeah. Yes, organic chicken. Is rice a good carb? Yeah, no, brown rice. Brown rice, yes. Do you eat brown rice? No. no. So you eat white rice. Chicken and rice 
is a wrong food combination. Be honest to me if you eat chicken and rice. Sometimes. You do it sometimes, yes? Okay. You chew the food, it pours through your esophagus, it goes into your stomach. You have HCL, hydrochloric acid. The only place there should be acid in your body is in your stomach, all right? Now, so many people think their stomach sits here. No, it's just right here. That's your intestine parts, okay? Now, the food continues, goes into your small intestine. In your small intestine, intestine there are enzymes. You have acidic enzymes, and you have alkaline enzymes. Enzymes, they break down the food into smaller molecules, so they can be absorbed through the micro release. They go to your liver, your liver produces it and sell it to your bloodstream. You have the energy. However, when you eat wrong food combination, these enzymes will cancel out each other. Your food remains undigested. It's gonna cause intestinal toxemia. And 62% of disease come from here in your small intestine and in your large intestine. It's very, very hot here. It's 100 Fahrenheit. The food rot, ferment, and produce toxins automatically, known as intestinal toxemia. And this is what's going to lead you to acid reflux. How many of you get acid reflux sometimes? How many of you get IBS, irritable bowel movement syndrome? How many of you get constipation nowadays? That's because of wrong food combination. Do you feel bloated? Do you feel lethargy? Do you feel tiredness? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so wrong food combination, auto intoxication, which is going to lead you to constipation as well. Okay, so we need to know what to eat as well. We need to know what are good food combination, what are wrong food combination, what is acidifying food, what is uh, alkaline food. There's a lot of information, all right? And today, me and my partner, Yemi, we are here to provide you with information, but you must take one step, so we can take 20 steps for you to bring you into perfect health again, all right? Now, let's move on. Let's recap. How many times should we exercise per week? Three to four times. What type of what type of exercise? Cardio, cardio, cardio and stretching. Brilliant. How many times should we eat per day? Five. What should be the largest meal of the day? Breakfast. Okay. Is chicken good protein? Yes. 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 Organic chicken. Fantastic. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, we have three food groups, right? What are the food groups we have? Carbs, Carbs protein. protein, and yes. fats. What is fats for? Energy. What Satisfaction. <laughs> Satisfaction. Give me, give me, <laughs> give me an example of a good fats. Uh, almond. Olive oil. Yes. No. Avocados. Yes. Good job. Give me examples of good carbs. Uh, broccoli, asparagus. Broccoli, spinach, cabbage, cauliflower. All your green, green stuff. Green. Yeah, yeah. Give me examples of bad carbs. Potato chips, potatoes, rice, rice, rice. Pasta, rice, pizza. Yeah, all these are bad carbs. Yeah. Give me examples of good protein. Salmon, fish, fish, salmon, yeah, um, egg, yeah. Bacon. 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 Okay, exercise will give you 20% of the reserve, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever goals you have, you want to lose weight, increase your energy, improve your health. Exercise can give you only 20% of the result. Nutrition, nutrition will give you 30% of the result. How many? 30% of the result. And detoxification will give you 50% of the result. This is what you have not been doing. And this is why we are here today, because we need to detox our body 
because every single day we bombard ourselves with toxins, right? right? Yes. Now, how many of you believe that uh, a five-day detox can cleanse our body right now? No, no. Is it possible? No. So how long a good detox program can take? <coughs> months. Months, yes, months. How many months? Two. Two months? Six, six, six. I would say an average detox program takes three months to six months. Extreme cases are seen 15 months. It depends on how much toxins you have inside of your body. Now, anyone suffering from type 2 diabetes here? Okay, type 2 diabetes, we can reverse this just by eating healthily. Okay, and losing the correct weight. And how are we going to lose weight? We have to exercise, we have to detox, we have to eat healthy, all right? Now, imagine you finish your detox program for three to six months, your body is clean, your intestine is clean, you have lost 20 pounds of waste, 20 pounds, 15 water retention, okay? What do you need to do after your detox program? to maintain your health with what? Exercise and nutrition. Do you service your car once? No. You do it regularly, right? Yeah. So our detox program here will last you three months to six months, but you have to do it every five years or six years. But five years, six years, you need to maintain your health with what? Exercise and nutrition. Means healthy eating, Good food combination, avoid toxins, okay? Now, how do I know, if I look at you, how much toxins you have inside of your body? Look at our stuff. Can I look at you and tell you how much toxins you have? No, it's not possible, all right? That's why on board ship here we have a test. We need to do a test with you. We call it BCA. What does BCA stand for? Okay, let me tell you. Body Composition Analysis, all right? This test will give us a full blueprint of your body. It will tell me exactly how much water you're retaining in terms of inflammation, in terms of toxins. So we can tell you exactly how much detox you will need. Do you think everyone we need uh, same detox here? No. Everyone is different, so we need different programs for each and every person, differently. We personalize the programs. We not generalize, all right? Now, it will also give me your B, M, oh, what is the meaning of? Body mass. Ratio. Your metabolic rate. Body mass ratio. Yes. It's your basal metabolic rate. <laughs> You're right. It's the amount of calorie. It's the... <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's the amount of calorie your body is burning on a resting period of 24 hours. So let's say you're burning 1500 and you're putting 2000 in your body. What's gonna happen to you? Gain weight. You're gonna gain weight. So we're gonna tell you how much to eat, but first we need to know the number as well, okay? Next, it will give you your body fat percentage. Now, this is not a body fat percentage, right? If you want to know how much fat you have, Calibre. when you go to your cabin, you dance in front of the mirror, you shake, <laughs> and when you stop, whatever keeps moving. <laughs> whatever keeps moving. <laughs> if you stop, whatever keeps moving, that's your fat, alright? So, <laughs> so <laughs> okay. <laughs> If your body fat percentage is above 35%, means you're prone to type 2 diabetes. You know you have uh, two types of fats in your body. Who can tell me? Two types of fats. You have your visceral fats, the visceral fat are the fats surrounding your internal organs, and you have your subcutaneous fat, means underneath your connective tissues. Okay? So we need to know what fats you have inside of your body because visceral fat can be very dangerous to your organs as well. All right? Now, it will also give me your extra cellular water per total body water. 
means the water retention are risk of that. If you retain, let's say, three pounds of water retention, you will need three months of detoxification. If you retain six pounds of water retention, you will need six months of detoxification. It all depends how much toxins you have. Remember, the more acidic your body is, more the more water retention you will have inside of your body. Okay, and this is because of your lifestyle, what you have been doing for 40 years, 60 years, or 25 years. You know, <laughs> you know in our Western world, this is what we do, just being honest. Do you want me to be honest or nice to you? No, honest. Honest, oh. right? So, <laughs> so we leave our 45 years damaging our body, and then we try to leave the other 45 years repairing the body. This is what we do, ladies and gentlemen. All right, but today you have a chance to walk with us so we can bring you back into perfect health. But when do you need to start? Now. Now, today, okay? You know, last year, I was a carnival dream. There was a couple in my seminar, okay? After the seminar, a couple came to me. Gentleman was in a wheelchair, lady was standing beside, and the daughter was sitting on a chair, all right? She came to me in this part. Gentleman was a, on a wheelchair, he told me that Savish, you know, your seminar, oh, makes sense. All of my life, I'll just walk, take care of my wife, my daughter, ignore my health completely. But it happens in a moment in my life, because of a stroke, I end up here in a wheelchair. And I want to do every single thing that can bring me back to walk with my wife and my daughter. And guess what? It's too late. Too late. So don't wait until something was happened with your health and then you will want to turn around and then you will want to change your lifestyle. It might be too late. All right? Do work on your health when you're healthy, not when you're sick. How many people have sick insu I mean, sleep insurance? How many people have health insurance here? When do you go to see your doctor? <laughs> when you're sick sometimes you go, right? Yeah. And then let's say you're having diabetes. What the doctor will give you? Yes, Medication. What are doctors doctor there for? What is your study? Medicine. Medicine. Medication, right? They will never tell you, I mean, the good one, we can, can recommend you some nutrition program, but otherwise, just take medication. All right? And, and you know, what is the biggest money maker industry in this world right now? The pharmaceutical Pharmacy. industry. Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Yeah. And an average American right now spend up to 4K to 6K on prescription and non-prescription medication. <coughs> Billions of money in statin, in metformin, in Lipitor, in all this medication. All right, so don't lose, don't lose this mistake, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna leave your whole life on medication. I understand, the same life, yes. But can you 